Lemon and Amiga Friends. A Slave Giant Video Review. Sit back and enjoy the show. to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Chase HQ, developed by Tech Software and published by Ocean in time of Christmas 1989. As you can see, this is played on a PAL computer and as such it has a huge board all the way around it. And that's because this game was in NTSC compatible mode, so let's just switch to NTSC and let's see if that makes any difference to this game. And I'm not quite sure whether that's a WinUAE or a WHD load bug, but we seem to have a black line running along the left hand side of our screen. But you can see in NTSC mode it's at least a lot bigger and the screen aspect ratio is maintained, so perhaps this being an NTSC compatible game, this is optimal as far as graphics. So let's just see if this game runs any more quickly in NTSC mode, and let's check that out. In NTSC, you can see that the screen is fuller than it is in the PAL mode and the music as well runs at the same speed and by pressing an F key I think you can switch off the music on and off with the sound effects. So the music and the sound effects run at the same speed as the PAL Amiga version but the frame rate as you can see well that actually runs identically. So I'm actually using a bit of a cheat at the moment which I'll come back to a little bit later on. So you can see that the PAL and the NTSC version are identical in the frame rate department without the sheet on, so it really doesn't make a difference. This game seems to be frame locked to the triple O processor and it really doesn't matter if you have an O30, O40 or an O60 in there, it will not speed up the game. To the power of emulation, let's just switch that over to the automatic scaling mode and that will make sure that we have the full NTSC screen and the same music and the same speed of the game experience. And hopefully that's the best of all worlds. So let's press that fire button and let's check this game out. This is Nancy at Chase Headquarters. We've got an emergency here. The aim of the game is to take down a criminal and the first one is driving a British sports car that's actually a Lotus Esprit and Lotus Esprit Turbo Challenge came out at the time of Christmas 1990 so these games came out at the same time and so you can't compare those two games and other games that came out around the same time had this banded road effect which was synonymous with many games on the 8-bit platforms and they could have done a lot better on the Amiga. Yeah, it seems to run exactly the same speed on PAL and NTSC and you can see that as soon as we collide into anything then it will knock us off the road and it doesn't matter whether that's a rock or a lamppost or whatever it may be so you'll have to drive very very slowly even though according to the speed or we are traveling very quickly and the other thing about this game is the controls are broken and if we manage to fall off the side of the road I will not be able to recover it and even though we get into a spin here in a skid I'm pulling to the right and there's no way I can force the car over onto the side of the road until it slows down.
gain extra score by bumping into the vehicles, but if you concentrate on the bad guy, that's the most important thing. And you can see in the bottom left corner, we only have one turbo remaining of the three that we are given. So it's best to save up all the turbos till the end, as long as you can find a straight piece of road where one slip doesn't send you careering off into the trees. This is mostly the average game experience that people experience when they try to play this game on the Amiga. And that's why it got very mixed reviews at the time. You can see that we have 6, 5, 4 seconds remaining, and so it won't be long before it's game over, because we simply don't have enough time to get to that criminal. out of time then you can press fire button to continue and this is where most people didn't bother to continue to play the game and they wrote it off as a very bad experience so let's enter our name into that high score table and appreciate this great music This game was based on a title original arcade game, which was much quicker and much more responsive than this. But this game also has a cheat mode built in, where if you press the fire button very quickly when the communication screen appears, then Nancy will disappear off the screen and the cheat mode will be active. Because this is the WHD load version I'm using, I've actually switched on the cheat before I tried the game. Let's try again with the cheat on and let's see if it's any quicker this time. By activating that cheat you can see that kilometers per hour does rise and becomes very much higher and you can see kilometers an hour which is strange because this was actually coded in britain and so they used kilometers an hour perhaps because of the arcade original which was Taito, of course and so we're still making the exact same mistakes on exactly the same places so i'm trying to minimize the cheat the fast acceleration mode at this point and I'm trying to play the game a little bit more normally but with the cheat on you'll find better grip than normal and better acceleration than normal and so this car handles a lot better than it did on the standard game and this is the cheat built into the standard game of course so anybody who had this could activate the cheat. When you get to that criminal the time will then be reset and we'll have a number of more seconds to get there and all we have to do is to drive slowly and avoid everything and because we're driving a high speed Porsche down the road chasing a high speed Lotus Esprit we'll have to move down to first gear and take everything really slowly. of sound effects carried over from the arcade version in the game and I'm not quite sure what they say hit him more and let's go Mr. Driver and things like that which is pretty impressive but they could have used more speech samples on the Amiga. You're under arrest. Nancy at Chase headquarters. We've got an emergency here. Let's check 
out a new competitor and he's using a Lamborghini and of course they couldn't use the word Lamborghini in this game. Too bad we have to bash in that machine now. Let's use the cheat mode a little bit more and let's try to reach that second criminal without going off. And that's not easy to do in this game because when you're going off, you're going off and there's nothing you can do about it unless you slow right down. So let's slow right down for these sections and hopefully we can save the cheat mode for the fast straights which should appear in between this very horrible banded road and these horrible banded fields. And this game reminds me of Power Drift and perhaps the guys who coded Power Drift also created this game and it has the same overhead gantries and things like that. This is based on the arcade game. Unfortunately, it doesn't play anything like the arcade game, not even in the slightest. There's some turbos and they really do speed up the frame rate by at least 10% and so we, we risk using a turbo, we risk also colliding into that scenery as well. So the turbos are pretty useless most of the time in this game. And so we are now taking down a yellow Lamborghini and we get extra score for doing that, which is not much consolation in the game. And so you can see that the road doesn't really change from level to level and the steepness of the curves as well, although we do get a banded background and some rocky hills as well, yet again reminding us of Monument Valley. risk using that turbo and let's get through this level and let's move on to that next stage. You're under arrest. And you're under arrest and you can see very limited animation is present on this particular screen. It's a German sports car and it's a Porsche 911 and so let's move on. Trying to be a bit braver with the cheat, it means that the kilometers per hour venture above the 200 barrier and that should mean that we're not as tight on the time as well. And this game isn't very enjoyable at this stage, as you can see, because every off is a disappointment. Particularly when we're supposed to be driving the car, it doesn't feel like it has any grip on the road whatsoever. Buildings might remind us of Batman the movie, and in the Batman re movie review, you may remember I said that the Batman driving level was based on Chase HQ. Well, that was actually Bill Harbison who worked on Batman the movie, the ZX Spectrum version, and so the driving section of Batman the movie actually came from the Spectrum version. And we don't have a clue who coded this game, apart from Alan Smithy. We've no credits on this game whatsoever. And it's no surprise given this game is such a disappointment for any fans around the world. 
but we do know that the music was created by fan of the show Matt Furness. Again, Super Matt has created another great soundtrack, and that's not bad at all. Perhaps the best thing about this game. in this game is a race against time just like Outrun but instead of stages that we have to get through well we get through two stages and then when we see that criminal the time is reset so you can see we have tons of time now using the cheat to get us over that 200 kilometers per hour but we're not really using the sheet at this point you're under arrest there are five stages in the entire game and this is stage three so, as you can see, there's a guy now holding someone's leg in the cutscenes of this game. Perhaps the best part is when Nancy comes along because I love the bass music in that particular cutscene. This is Nancy at Chase Headquarters. We've got an emergency here. By using the cheat mode, you can see that our speed is rising. And as you will see, it goes into the thousands. And now, if we check that out, that's actually now in the millions of kilometers. Millions of kilometers per hour in this game. And so with millions of kilometers per hour going and a tight driving experience where we can actually turn the corners, this game actually turns into a fun experience. Yes, if you thought CSHQ was impossible, slow and boring, well, it's not impossible with the cheat on, because we have the grip, it's not impossible with the speed either, and it occurs to me, why didn't they simply make the top speed, the top frame rate, which you can achieve with the cheat on, and then that would have made the game much better, and why didn't they at least make the grip of the car much tighter, and then you wouldn't fall off the road? But they didn't do that, they spoiled it, but they did put a cheat into the game, where that is actually possible. So let's move on to the final scenario and hopefully with the cheat on we can start to have some fun with this game. And after so many years, most players definitely hated this game for its failed opportunity to be anywhere decent. And so this is the game's final chance to prove itself so the average Amiga user could actually play it at full speed. With the cheat on, you can see that this game is fun and it's playable and you don't have to slow down for any of the corners either, and so it means that this is actually a very fun ride where we get to drive at high speed down these roads. And I think that at some point the collision detection, well, you can still dive out on those bushes as you can see, but with the cheat on, we really do get a thrill ride out of this humdrum experience and this is being played on a triple O processor. This is not on the 20, it's simply on an Amiga 500.
we get on to those scores. The last score came from Lemon Amiga, who gave this 55%. Zap Magazine gave the Amiga version 67%. Dato Magazine gave it 70%. And C Amiga gave this 70%. Amiga Joker awarded it 76 Zero gave it 80 Amiga Action gave this game 82%. And Amiga Format also gave the game 82% and Ace Magazine awarded it 84, the one gave it 85 and the highest score came from Amiga User International who awarded this game, yes this very game, 90%. Those scores mean the average is an 8 out of 10 and that means that this game is close to being perfect in the eyes of Amiga User International. Maybe they used the cheat and had some fun with it. But I'd probably give this a 5 at the very most. You're under so that's yet another criminal taken down, and I think that's also the end of the game. And so all that remains is the final cut sequence, the final bits of music, and then it's basically game over. If I was to rate this game, I'd definitely only give it a 5 because this was a lost opportunity. The graphics are functional, the sound effects and the music are functional but nothing outstanding, and without the cheat on it's a pretty infuriating experience, as you might remember if you have tried this game. And I went through a period of hating the game, and without the cheat on, that's quite realistic to do that because it really is a hateful game. But you can see that we are no way travelling 300 kilometers per hour, even on the title screen. It feels like that we're driving about 30. And so this game is not benefited from faster CPUs. This is not Test Drive 2. And because it was in NTSC compatible mode, we didn't get that in full screen either. So I would avoid this game all costs. And without the cheat on, it's pretty dire. So thank you and see you again in another Play Guide sometime soon.